Hey everyone, ooh, that's loud. Thanks for being here today. Um, as mentioned, I work for Autodesk as a senior business intelligence analyst on the market intelligence team. And over the next 20 minutes, I hope to show you guys how we have leveraged Trifacta on top of AWS to improve our customer analytics practice. So quick agenda for the meeting today. I'm gonna first give a quick intro into Autodesk and the market intelligence team. I'll then talk about a specific use case that we have where we were developing a 360-degree view of a subset of customers to drive marketing and sales strategy. I'll talk about the old way that we used to do things and the challenge that it posed. The new solution that we implemented with Trifacta and Snowflake on top of AWS to streamline that old manual process. And then also go into the results that we experienced. And uh, if there's time at the end, I'll take some questions. So first, Autodesk. Uh, for you, those of you that don't know, uh, a simple way of putting it is that we provide software for people who make things. And that may sound kind of nebulous, so to give you an example, uh, the plane or cars that got you to the conference this week, the building that we're in right now, uh, the phones in your pocket, maybe even the poker chips that some of you plan on winning later, uh, though, there's a very good chance that Autodesk software was involved in the design and make process that allowed all those things to come to be. So we started with AutoCAD in the 1980s, uh, and this was originally designed as a tool to help engineers create their designs electronically rather than using traditional methods. We've since expanded uh, to a vast portfolio of products that uh, is used across the construction, engineering, media and entertainment, and manufacturing industries. So why do I mention this? Uh, the length of time that our comp company's been around and all the industry segments that we serve because it gives us a lot of customer data to work with. And that's where my team comes in. On the market intelligence team, we kind of act like an internal consultancy to provide unbiased data insights into our customers and the markets in which they operate. And this is used to inform strategic decision making. We try and utilize every bit of data that our company has access to, whether that's internal customer transactional data or possibly external market research reports, and we're really a cross-functional team in the sense that we serve many stakeholders across the entire organization. So whether that's strategy, sales, finance, or product, we do analyses for all these different teams. As a result of this, uh, each project that we take on requires us to join separate data sets that live in separate data environments. And also, each analysis has a layer of complexity uh, and differentiation that really makes repeatability and automation difficult. And so to illustrate this difficulty, this is what a sample project lifecycle used to look like for our team. It followed four general steps that were very fragmented and not repeatable. So the first was the extract and compile step. This is when we would use a SQL script editor or a BI tool to select the data that we needed that lived in the separate environments and extract them into Excel. We'd then go into the manipulate stage where we would join all these data sets using you know, various Excel functions, including pivot tables, index matches, create new fields um, to get our final output that we would then send off to the stakeholder. So the problem with these two steps is that, as I mentioned, data is housed in different environments, and the only common platform that we could join those in was Excel. Uh, as you can imagine, manipulating hundreds of thousands of rows of data within Excel uh, is not very efficient and also can cause the program to crash. So that was the first issue that we faced. Uh, the next was in the publish and refresh steps. So to publish the data sets, we'd often just, you know, if we needed to keep it in Excel, just send it off to the stakeholder in that format. Or if we needed to create some visualizations, we'd throw those into a PowerPoint and send it over to the stakeholder via email. Usually around six months down the road, the stakeholder wants this analysis refreshed. They wanna see how the output has changed, if there's any new customers that have fallen into their sales and marketing strategies. And because the data is not live, it's not repeatable, it's not automated, we'd have to restart the entire process from scratch. Additionally, if they wanted any updates to be made, maybe uh, sooner than six months down the road, again, we would have to restart the process all over again. Uh, and this is really just us recreating the wheel. We're not adding any value to our stakeholders when we're doing that. We're just recreating an old process. And so it's just inefficient and unstable. So to give you some more color into this, 
I want to go through a specific use case that my team faced and how we used to, do way, used to tackle this use case using the old process and the solution that we implemented with Trifacta, Snowflake, and AWS. So the request we got was to create a prioritized list of current construction customers that didn't own our construction processing tool, BIM 360. The challenge here is that in order to create a proper prioritization, we really need a, th uh, a full 360 degree view of our customer base. That means incorporating every metric that we possibly have access to at the company. The problem is that the data used to track financial metrics and those used to track uh, account and product ownership metrics are housed in different data environments. <laughs> These two data sets also have separate unique identifiers which can only be joined together using a mapping table that has around or over one million rows. So that entire thing for us couldn't be thrown into Excel. That means we'd have to create a subsegment of that mapping table running an in function on around 90,000 customer IDs. And as you can imagine, that is a very inefficient query and a significant resource drain. So summarizing this, separate data sources that have different levels of BI access points combined with the large data sets that we were working off of, and the inability to automate this entire process led to a very lengthy, unstable, and unscalable analysis. And this is just a quick visualization of how that process went for us. We had the financial and account and product data uh, housed in separate data environments. We had to join them together using an ID mapping table within Excel. This process, this step alone, could take an hour if the in function that I was talking about, that query crashed. And then the manipulation within an Excel, that could cause the program to crash, which you know, would it cause additional uh, time and headaches. And then when we finally sent it off to the, uh, the stakeholder in a PowerPoint and Excel format, they ended up liking the analysis a lot and they wanted it refreshed a little quicker than we originally anticipated. This was an issue because we then had to go back and redo the entire process from scratch. And it didn't only take three hours because we had to add those new metrics in. It actually took longer the second time around, causing delays in their sales and marketing strategies. And also, because they, uh, due to lack of automation and the live updates of data, we really did not have a good interaction with our stakeholders. Additionally, because we spent so many manual steps getting from the source tables, to our final output, it really increased the likelihood of inaccuracies in that final output that we were sending to the stakeholder. So, as you can see, this process was very unstable and inefficient, and that's where AWS, Trifacta, and Snowflake have come in, which allows the organization in which my team sits to create a new centralized data ecosystem. So our data engineers can use AWS's suite of products to prepare, aggregate, and ingest the data into our centralized data environment in Snowflake. This allows me, the BI end user, to access internal enterprise data sources, as well as external marketing and market research sources in a common data environment. If we need to do any visualization, or we can then use Trifacta to manipulate those base tables and rewrite the finished output back into Snowflake. If we need to do any visualizations, we need to do any dashboarding, there's a link between Snowflake and Power BI. For our specific use case today though, I wanna focus on the connection between Snowflake and Trifacta and how that really helped streamline the process I was talking about. So just wanna reiterate where this old process was very unstable and unscalable. The new process is simple, streamlined, and dynamic. You can see it still follows four steps as the old process did, but whereas those the old process, those four steps were very fragmented and separate. These new four steps are part of a simplistic data pipeline that allows for effortless refresh and updates to be made. This is increasing our stakeholder interaction and also decreasing the likelihood of data inaccuracy in the final output. And additionally, it's freeing us up to provide deeper analysis for our stakeholders because we're not spending so much time and manpower just recreating the wheel. So I want to get into these steps a little bit in, in a little bit more detail. So the first is the organized step, and this is done within the Snowflake environment. So I can take the base tables that we have within Snowflake uh, to create 
a base table of account and product ownership of our construction customers. I can also create a base table of the financials for these same customers and create another base table of that ma ID mapping table I uh, mentioned earlier. When all those base tables are created, I can then link them back to Snowflake using their connection tool, which allows you to connect to a lot of different platforms, obviously, but our team specifically focuses on Snowflake. Then when we need to manipulate the data, we need to join, in, join these data sets together, create new fields. You can do so using Trifacta's vast uh, library of functions. The one I'm focusing on here is the join function because that's really what's been so beneficial to us in this uh, specific use case. The intuitive UI and intelligent UI, when you join to a new data set, uh, guesses which, what the join key will be. If on the off chance it guesses wrong, you can edit what that join key will be and then select what output columns you want in your final data set. The best part about this all is that it's saved in a flow. So all those manual steps that I was mentioning earlier that we did in Excel that weren't repeatable and weren't automatable, now are saved in a flow that you can easily edit using the recipe bar you see there on the right. And then when you need to refresh, six months, a week, maybe even a day down the road, all you need to do is rerun the job. And as long as the structure of your base tables remains the same, you don't need to update anything. If on the off chance the structure does change, or maybe you need to add in a new metric, like I mentioned earlier, the stakeholders wanted us to add in a new metric on the second iteration of the analysis, it's as easy as just editing the recipe. So the results that we experienced, I'll get into those a little bit right here. First was in the transformation process. So basically the first iteration of when we have to run an analysis. We saw a significant decrease in time and effort from around three plus hours to just one hour. This was due to the fact that we weren't having crashes in the program. The intelligent UI was guessing the manipulations that we needed to make. And also we had a centralization of data within Snowflake that could be easily linked to the Trifacta tool. And then where we really saw the added value was in the speed of the refresh and the updates that we could make due to automation. So as I mentioned earlier, when we had to refresh an analysis, it not only took just as long as the first, uh, first phase of the analysis, it usually took longer because we had to add in new metrics, new manipulations, and that now has decreased to just minutes. So instead of needing to recreate the entire process, we now just have to update one step or one table in the flow, and we have our finished product. There's two big uh, improvements that this has led to for my team. The first is our ability to react to stakeholder requests. So whereas before when they would you know, send us a new request, it would usually take us, like I said, around three, three, four hours to get that request done, and then I'd have to go back and also manually check to make sure the data was accurate every step along the way. So it usually took maybe around another day to get that data back to them. That makes it slower for them to be able to execute on their sales and marketing strategies. And so that just, it, it increases the tension of our relationship. Now that we're able to refresh within minutes, the stakeholder interaction has improved vastly. But more importantly, now that we don't have to spend so much time redoing efforts that we've already done, we have more time to think more proactively about what our stakeholders could need, whether it's new metrics we think they could be, that could be included to improve the prioritization model that they not, might not be thinking of, uh, or just thinking of new ways to incorporate more adv advanced statistical analysis into that model. We've really been able to dive deeper into these insights due to the speed of the refresh and the decreased time and effort in the transformation process that Trifacta, Snowflake, and AWS have allowed us. So thank you guys, really appreciate you coming out today. Uh, it looks like we have a little bit of time um, if there's any questions. And uh, yeah, if not, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the conference. Uh, Sorry, I have, a, I have a mic now. Okay. <laughs> Apologize. Um, what's the process of moving from 
a preparation phase that a customer requests into sort of automating that and having that run on a regular basis? How does your team decide which pipelines move into an automated run versus which ones are just ad hoc? To be honest, most of our projects were originally ad hoc, ad hoc analyses. Um, and it's kind of just on a request by request basis. Uh, we have to be, this is also allowing us to jump out in front of those processes and ask them if we think it's something that will need to be repeated uh, six months down the road. And what we're realizing is that a lot of those processes can be repeatable and can be automated and will need to be refreshed six months down the road, especially if we're working with specific groups that we know have aggressive sales targets and aggressive marketing targets. So they're going to be needing those reports on a, a more frequent basis. So uh, I guess to answer your question, it's kind of just, it's different group to group. Um, and it really just depends on what their ultimate goal is. Any other questions for John? Well, John, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you everyone for stopping by. Please come back and see us for our next presentation starting at 1.10. Have a great show, everyone.